everyone doing? Okay, so there was another mobbing attempt today. Um, basically, what happened is the person who put me onto the property, not the people who are in charge of it, called me today and said that apparently the relocation agent that I normally deal with, um, that I've had some issue with her. Um, I told him the truth about... I told him the truth about what happened with my back and my hips and how it was handled. And this person said, okay, fine, that, but they don't have a legal obligation to help you, which is true. They don't. But, um, my issue was, wasn't legal obligation or moral ob obligation. It's just that I asked him to do one thing whilst I was fucking screaming in agony, um, in the midst of the threats to call the police and, you know, 5am in Los Angeles, haven't slept, trust me, I know a thing about entrapment, they've tried a few times, even with my dad before he flipped, yeah, plants are surviving, I got you, they do this shit all the time, so, you know, whilst I was in pain, in complete agony, mind you, being tortured by the weapons, which isn't my fault really, because, you know, the torturers wanted to play big bollocks, so it's not my fault that happened, and then on top of that, even whilst I was doubled up in pain, and whilst I was going through what I was going through, no, I know Shane. I know Shane. I actually met him. He's all right. He's a good. He's a good guy. Um, yeah. So um, basically, the what the way it worked was that I hadn't been speaking to this relocation agent since that incident. The only time when I've actually had contact with them was to talk about the blinds and the windows. So my thing is the reason why that email was sent to the person, in, you know, the person who introduced me to the property in the first place, I believe the reason that email was sent to them was to start an argument, basically have me looking crazy and to make it look like I'm being difficult when really I was doubled up in agony. I could not walk and all I asked you to do was leave the door on the latch and leave. I didn't even ask you to stay with me. That's not asking for much, is it? And while he's right about the fact that I should have, like, made a separate key um, to give another friend to, um, well, I'm not being funny, when you're screaming in agony and you can't walk, you're not going to be thinking of that, are you? You're going to be thinking of the next thing to hand. Um, so that's what I did. You know, when I was doubled up and in pain and screaming in agony, I said, look, just leave the door in a the latch, then leave. I don't want you to come over here asking questions. I don't want you to come over here trying to find out what happened. I want you to do what I ask you. Leave the door in the latch and leave. I've already called the ambulance. You're not a doctor. I don't need your help. Okay? That's all I wanted you to do. And like I said, you don't have a legal obligation to be there. So just leave the door in the latch and piss off. Like, I don't understand what's difficult. So, you know, basically this person who was talking to me on the phone, they said, oh, this person seems quite reasonable or I know them pretty well or, you know, they wouldn't do anything. And yeah, obviously they have no legal obligation to help me even when, you know, it's true they don't because it's not the same as a training flat. The training flat, you have health coordinators, project coordinators, you have health coordinators, you have, um, you know, property coordinators. There are people there who are supposed to help you when you're in a training flat. But this is private rented accommodation. So the obligations work a little bit differently here. So technically, she doesn't have to come over and do that. It's just that at the time, that was the only solution I could think of. I would have called around the houses. I would, you know, even my friends offered to come over. But the only reason why I didn't let them come over is because they didn't have a key yet. Okay. So, um... Yeah, um, I explained all of this to the person on the other end, the person that called me today, the estate agent. I said to them, I don't like the way this situation was handled. Um, even if you're not going to come over here, it still would have been better than you threatening to call the police because of me screaming in agony. Then you basically creating a whole farce where you're asking me to pass a key through a window when you know I can't walk. It would have been better than you leaving the door wide open for people moving into the property next to me to be able to see everything that would me coming and going, including me being half naked, having to crawl to the toilet. So you not showing up, actually, you know, you not showing up and waiting for the ambulance to come and break the door down, it would have actually been better that, than what ended up happening. 
Do you understand what I'm saying? So if they really want to go there, the relocation agent not showing up would have been better than if they had showed up because when they did show up, when they did show up, it was a fucking farce. Okay. And seeing as I have no legal obligation to be there, it would have been better if they didn't show up. So, so basically that was the crux of the conversation where it got a bit sketchy for me was when this estate agent basically said at first that apparently I had problems with the relocation agent and I did have problems with the relocation agent. Um, and I explained what those problems were. And I said, well, you know, I said, well, you mentioned their name specifically. I mean, did they say something or, and then they changed their story and said, no, the relocation agent didn't say anything. It was actually somebody from the council that emailed them. Now get this, right? After that phone conversation, I just went click, right? I was angry. I just went click. I decided, let me double check and see if the council actually you know, actually called the, the estate agent because my understanding from my last phone conversation with the estate agent is that you are going to have to stay for the duration of the contract. And even then, if you decide to leave early, um, it's going to be a full year before we're able to give you another deposit for another flat. So you've got to stay there, see the contract through. And even if you do decide to leave at the end of the contract, which is six months, um you still have to pay for the deposit yourself you have to save up and pay for the deposit yourself so that's how they get you right so knowing this um and knowing it was a mobbing attempt because i'm thinking why are you calling me now now that i've had no arguments with the relocation agent that i've simply you know had a back and forth with them about the blinds and the windows and there was no argument why would you bring this up now? Why would anybody from the a- from the agency bring this up now for the estate agent to, to, to talk about? That's mobbing. That's mobbing and that's a setup. My thing is, if it was really a problem, you would have come, come to me sooner. I literally accuse these people of trying to um, engage in an entrapment campaign with vulnerable people because landlords do that all the time. I've seen it in action. Um, I basically accuse them of, you know, engaging in an entrapment campaign, which is exactly what this is. So my thing is, why wouldn't you have contacted the estate agent then and said, look, we're really concerned that this person thinks we're doing this, that and the third. Uh, you know, but the only thing that anybody talked about was the relocation agent, which makes me think that the relocation agent either... Either they're a pawn, either they're a willing pawn or they're being set up too. Because why out of everything would you bring up the fact that me and only one relocation agent seem to have an issue? Why like why would you like why would you do that? And why would you sort of it, it just seemed like a very weird conversation. Oh, is there something wrong with the flat itself? If you receive the email, if you received the email from the council, you would have known that, no, it wasn't the f- property itself. So basically you're calling me for no reason, talking about the property being, we've already sorted out the problems with the property early on because I insisted on it. The heaters have been fixed, a shower's been, a new shower was installed because I insisted on it. And, you know, as for the windows and blinds, like I'm not really that bothered about it right now. Um, but, but, Bottom line is, when it comes to the flat itself, problems have been sorted. The problem was with the relocation agent, which had been squashed weeks ago because me and them didn't have an argument since. But it's like I say before, it's only when things start to improve. It's only when things... Um, I'm not making much sense. I'm, I, I apologise. Because I'm trying to get... I'm trying to not name names. So I'm not making much sense. But my thing is, is that the estate agent calling now about the relocation agent when me and the relocation agent hadn't been arguing hadn't been fighting for weeks now because that back incident happened weeks ago it happened like damn near a month ago so really what you're doing is you're trying to engineer another argument 
to try and make me look difficult, to try and make me look, look like I shouldn't be there. And again, if you're going to do that, then just be prepared that I'm going to expose you. I ain't got a problem with it. Okay. I ain't got a problem with it. I've got evidence and I've got names. I ain't got a problem with it. If that's the game these people want to play, if they want to try to entrap me out of here, I've got enough info. I've got enough information on these people and they keep bringing me evidence. So bring the shit. I've got more than enough evidence to prove that these people were deliberately trying to lay me into a trap to leave me on the street. Got more than enough evidence. And yeah, people can say it doesn't matter, but it does. Because then you see in action exactly how these entrapments work. I'm a TI, so what I go through is a more extreme case of that, you know, with the hip stuff. What I go through is a more extreme case of that. But even when you're not a targeted individual as a, as a, um, as an, you know, as a vulnerable person or as somebody who is seen as an undesirable, you're going to be mobbed. You, you're going to run the risk of being mobbed out of your home. That's how it happens. And a lot of people can say, you know, a lot of people can talk shit and say all this type of, oh, that's not true. You're just making a mountain out of a molehill. Look, look at how gentrification has changed everything from the last 20 years, the last 40 years even. And then come back and tell me, you know what I mean? It's just, it's just, it's just ridiculous at this point. It's just ridiculous at this point. The entrapment is obvious. So why am I going to leave, have a situation well, I could end up homeless because I can't afford the deposit. Why am I going to have be in that situation and not gather evidence on you? And not gather evidence on you. I'm going to try to be as clear as I can. Long story short, the estate agent called me because the relocation agent or somebody adjacent to the relocation agent, I think it was, I think it was the agency themselves and not the agent, said that I had a problem with the former person, the relocation agent, said that I had a problem with them or I had a problem with the flat itself and that I wanted to live somewhere else. And this person wanted to check if there was an issue with the flat. I said, no, there isn't an issue with the flat. It's actually an issue with the person I'm dealing with. And I could have said a lot more than I did. I only brought, brought up the stuff to do with my back. I could have easily brought up the stuff leading up to that. I actually let this person know, look, I was suffering it. I let them know days before that incident happened that I was in a lot of pain and I wouldn't be able to, you know, and if I wasn't able to get back to you, you'd know, you'd know why, because I was in pain and, and all the rest of it. And as for the day of me being in pain, I acted more than reasonably considering I was literally in fucking agony. I asked you to leave the la leave the door on the latch and leave. Leave the door on the latch and leave. Leave the door on the latch and leave. You're not any uh, un under any moral obligation to do uh, any. You're not under any legal obligation to come over and to do anything for me. I get that, but it doesn't mean you have to be deliberately spiteful and try to fucking humiliate me when you know I can't walk. Threaten me when you know I'm in pain. You're just being fucking vindictive. Leave the door on the latch, then leave. It's not difficult. I don't want you asking me questions. I don't want you quit quizzing me about anything because I'm the one who called the ambulance, not you. You could have called the ambulance, but instead you threatened to call the police because I was in pain. And you decided to try and interpret me screaming at the top of my lungs as a fucking threat. You were the one who decided to do that. Leave the door in the latch and leave. Fuck off. I don't want to talk to you. And every time I'm around this person, I'm forced to kind of be polite and stuff like that because it's either that or I completely lose my temper. That's the only reason I'm even bothering to be polite to them. You see, when these people start talking shit and these people are cutting and rude and gaslighting, they think that you're being polite and that, you know, you're being all nice because no, it's either that or you end up killing them. That's the thing they don't understand. You're only being polite to them to save your own temper and to stop your own situation becoming worse. You're not doing it because you respect them. They seem to think that that behavior and that attitude engenders respect. I never make that mistake. 
I know that when I fight for my rights, people are going to resent me. So I put contingency plans in place because I know two things. One, I can be foolhardy sometimes. And two, people are very easily intimidated by me. So I put contingency plans in place and I accept the consequences if people are scared of me. That's why if it ends up with me being on the street, if it ends up with me not having the deposit to pay for another flat, I'm easy. I'm good. I don't, I'm, I'm not worried about that because I accept that's going to be the consequences of me having bad blood with the people that run this place. I accept that as a consequence because what's more important to me is that the gang stalking is exposed. I accept that as a consequence, but these people who want to run their mouths, these people who want to do the opposite of everything that I tell them to do, just to make it extra humiliating, make it extra painful, make it extra stressful on top of everything that I'm already dealing with. These people who want to run their mouths and act like they're smarter than me. And by the way, fucking crazy, by the way, you have to be fucking loopy to think that you're ever going to be smarter than me just because you know how to run your mouth. Bro. When you carry on like that, you do not engender respect. You don't even engender fear. You engender anger. And the only reason people don't deal with you is to stop themselves from... It's because they want to buy themselves enough time to be able to do what they need to do. There's a lot of people that I've dealt with in this city. They're very fucking lucky. Let me tell you something right now. They're very lucky. They're very fucking lucky. They don't understand how lucky they are. I'm the one in pain. I'm the one in agony. And I'm the one who can't fucking walk. Yet I've got this person on the phone weeks later. When the shit has already been sorted out. Weeks later. Talking about, oh, you're having problems with one start. Changing your story as to why you're calling me. And then I call the person from the council. And the council said, no, we, no, we, haven't, we, haven't, we haven't spoken to the estate agent. And the person from the council hasn't gotten back to me yet, by the way. I haven't gotten back to me yet. I don't expect everything to happen quick, but the fact that they haven't gotten back to me yet, it speaks volumes. Yeah, that was a mobbing attempt. That thing that happened with my back was a mobbing attempt. That fucking phone call this morning was a mobbing attempt. I'm not trying to hear anything else. That because that's exactly how it's done. I've had the same problem with mental health. It was only when I got better. That's when I got the phone call. That's when I got the visits. It's the same here. When things are calm, when things are reasonable, when they, that's when they bring up the past. And that's when they try to use it against me. I'm not stupid. That's why I get evidence on these motherfuckers. I'm not stupid. How the fuck are you going to call me weeks after everything's been squashed? And try to tell me, uh, you know, you know, and try to bring up the past, bring up past situations that have already been sorted out. At this point, me and a relocation agent are talking about windows and blinds. We ain't had a we ain't had a set two since the back incident. Maybe even before that. Maybe even before that, we haven't even had an incident for weeks. And yet you call me with this bullshit. I'm going to expose you. I don't have a problem with it. I don't have a problem with it. And if I'm going to be homeless anyway. And me exposing your ass is a breach of the contract. Let the contract be breached motherfucker. Because I ain't fucking paying for it anyway. I'm going to be out on the street. Thanks to you. So I ain't got to pay for shit. Fuck around with me. You think I'm not going to have insurance? You think I'm about to walk up out of here with no, with no, fucking, no fucking dirt on nobody? I don't operate like that. I don't operate like that. I'm not about to walk up out of nowhere and, and not have dirt on nobody. The fuck? Don't call me up. Weeks after the situation has been sorted out, don't call me up that like, you know, and if it's, if it's to do with the relocation agency, why the fuck would they have contacted the, the estate agent? Like, you know, at the precise time when nothing's wrong, why would you do that? Why would you do that? 
You did that so that you can engineer an argument. Hey, these people did that so they can engineer an argument and they can't fuck around with me because I've got the conversations recorded. They did that so they can engineer an argument because there was nothing wrong. There was nothing wrong. I was hearing knocking from next door. That was blatantly an attempt to harass me. I was hearing knocking from next door. Hearing taunts from next door. I didn't give a fuck. Okay, I did not give a fuck. I did not care. I just wanted to be left alone. And because it wasn't working, because the pain wasn't working, suddenly this bullshit comes. Now I get a phone call from the estate agent saying, oh, you know, we're ha here, you're having trouble. I haven't had trouble for weeks, my guy. It's always when things are better that they pull this shit. That's why I get evidence. That's why I get evidence. That's why I get evidence. It's always when I'm getting better that they pull this shit. And by the way, people have been using my broadband as well. I had to switch it off last night because they kept interrupting connection. But yeah... That, yeah, they did that intentionally. They did that intentionally in order to paint a picture of me as being difficult. But the, the dread thing is, is that the back incident thing, I really could have, I could have gone, I really could have gone out there and just fucking, you know, just emailed everything that she's been, I, I might have actually done that. But I really could have gone out of my, gone out of my way and emailed everything that I've I really could have gone out of my way and done that. I really could have done that. And let's see who's professional then. And by the way, I'm thinking that that estate agent, that relocation agent got a thing going on business wise. And that's why they're protecting each other like this, because the relocation agent is extremely unprofessional. And the way the estate agent handle it. And it's like, you know, oh, no legal obligation. OK, fine. You don't have a she, no I, like for me if you don't have a legal obligation then you don't have a moral obligation that's the way I think of it but I was still in pain and just and despite the fact that I was in pain and screaming I asked her to leave the door and latch and leave it turned into a fucking circus an hours long farce of you accusing me of threatening the neighbours. And just making uh, making a bad situation ten times worse. And then I got this estate agent on the phone backing you up. Nah, you two are you two are in cahoots together business wise. There's something going on there. There's something going on there business wise. I don't think there's anything else going on there in any other way. But I think business wise, there's something going on there. Something underneath the table. Because the fuck you're gonna tell me that you know they behave reasonably under the circumstances. I ask you to leave the door and latch and fucking leave. And then you want to try to be passive aggressive with me and say, oh, most people just leave. I'm thinking, you know, I could have told this person that that was my first time. This is my first time living in a private accommodation and that I don't necessarily know how things work. But I, I didn't feel like telling them that. I didn't feel like telling them that. Then go piss up a rope. I don't feel like telling them that. Don't piss up a rope, mate. I'd rather get evidence on you so that I have a bomb to drop in the middle of this flat when I leave. And no, I don't mean that literally. You know, because you know how these people are. They'll say, oh, she's a terrorist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, anything bad that happens on my end, they're going to fucking dramatise and try to make me look dangerous because of it. Because that's what the fuck they do. So what to do with this murderous rage? What to do with this murderous rage? I get evidence. I collect evidence. I collect evidence and I expose people that are deliberately mistreating me, deliberately gaslighting me. And especially trying to go out of their way to humiliate me when they know I'm vulnerable. And then trying to make it look like a rational thing to do. That's how I handle that shit. Say what, say what you want. Get fresh with me. Go ahead and get fresh with me. Go ahead and pick a fight. Go ahead and gaslight me. Go ahead and try and entrap me out of here. I'll make sure I drag down your whole business when I leave here. 
I don't mind doing it. It's not a problem. And as far as I'm concerned, if you're gone, that eliminates the competition. That's fine by me. Because clearly, the way these estate agents are carrying on, there's lots of vulnerable people out here who are in danger of being homeless because people don't know how to deal with them. You get the same thing. These vulnerable people, they ask for simple shit. They don't ask for much. Then they're painted as difficult and and cost and costly. They're painted as difficult and costly. And then next thing you know, they're out on their ear. They're being fucking bullied out of their homes for some rich people to move in. You think I don't know how this works? Or at the very least for some working immigrants to move in. Now, I don't blame the immigrants. Because, you know, if, if it wasn't for immigrants, this country would be in the dogs. This country would have been in the dogs already without immigrants coming over here. So that's not the issue for me. The issue for me is these, you know, these agencies and the council and, you know, bullying vulnerable people out of their homes, stretching them out to the outskirts where they have very little protection. Why do you think I chose Brighton? Because if I didn't choose Brighton, then Brent, where I used to live, would have chosen somewhere else for me. They would have either chosen a place that was very, very, you know, they would have chosen a place that was very bad for my mental health. And on top of that, I would have been isolated. At least this way with the choice that I've made, I'm close to nature so that it, it actually helps with, helps me with my mental health. I'm closer to nature so it helps me with my mental health. If I'm going to be out, out of the way, then I'd rather be out in a way that actually helps me heal. But if I'd have left it to Brent, they probably would have had me in somewhere like Croydon where my mental health would have suffered. And then on top of that, I would have been out of the way where my family couldn't reach me. At least this way, my family can't reach me, yes. But I'm in nature and I'm in a place that's conducive for my mental health. But they do this to vulnerable people all the time. Move them from one, you know, move them from one former ghetto to another emerging one. That's what they do with vulnerable people in a nutshell. Even without the gang stalking, even without the targeting, that is what's been done to me and that is what's been done to several several vulnerable and marginalised people over the decades. And watch when I come through. Watch when I come through. Ain't going to be no more of that. Ain't going to be no more of that. No more painting vulnerable people is difficult for you to mob them out. No more fucking entrapment campaigns when I come through. No more of this fucking bullshit where you're calling, spoiling for a fight, spoiling for an argument when things are quiet. Not on my watch. Not on my fucking watch. So go ahead and turf me out of here. And you'll see exactly what I'm going to be able to achieve when I leave here. I've got murderous rage inside me and that's the only reason why I've been able to progress as far as I have. It's because of the hatred. The amount of hatred I have for humanity, you wouldn't believe. But it's that hatred that keeps me polite to a person even when I know I shouldn't be. If I love them... It's hatred that allows me to get these evidence on people. It's hatred that allows me to get my mind straight enough to think clearly, even in a situation where I'm debilitated and incapacitated. Hatred. So these people thinking they're powerful by thinking they can say anything to me and, 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 ev- and everything to me. At this point, they should have recognised that it wasn't working. I ain't been working for years. Look at what I've been able to do based on the amount of hatred that I have in my heart. Look at what I've been able to do. And their big idea is to fucking provoke that. Okay, best of luck. There's a reason why everybody's afraid of me. I don't have a dime to my name yet, not a penny to my name yet. 
and these people are intimidated by me. I proved I don't need money to have power. So anyway, in a nutshell, that was a rant and a half. I apologise. In a nutshell, today I got a call from the estate agent basically bringing up... It, it wasn't really old beef between me and relocation agent, but basically spoiling for a fight and trying to make me look bad and trying to say, you know, oh, this person's reasonable and they wouldn't do anything wrong. And this, like, it was just basically... It was basically a phone call to get me angry and spoil for a fight. So that they could take, you know, little bits of what I say and do and then try to paint a picture of me being violent and difficult to deal with. But this is exactly why I use that rage inside me to collect evidence and to get to get what I need from people. They're destroying my health and life. Yeah, they do that to all of us. Yeah, so basically, though that rage that I have inside me from them destroying the lives and hells of t uh, health of TIs. All that rage I have inside me, I use it to get evidence. I use it to make sure I can handle my business professionally. I might not be happy, but I get shit done. I get shit done. I get shit done. Go ahead. And, and start, they exit and enter, enter, I'm, I'm, no, I, I know what you're talking about, the common or garden gang stalk, or what I'm on live talking about at the moment, or trying to anyway, was basically somebody in higher authority, or somebody to do with my property, basically calling me, um, spoiling for a fight, because things were too calm, because, um, you know, spoiling for a fight because I was too calm. So that's what we're talking about here. I'm used to all the I'm used to all the NLP tricks and all the street theatre of the gang stalkers by now. What we're talking about is something bigger. And this is important because it helps people to understand exactly how they're being entrapped. I'm going I'm actually gonna leave in a few minutes. I just wanted to wrap up the summary because I did a lot of ranting on this video. So I'm just basically wrapping it up. So basically the estate agent called me basically spoiling for a fight or you know bringing up the past to use against me later because mental health has done the same thing always when it's quiet when it's calm when there's nothing wrong or when you're in control of this situation that's when they bring something new into the equation look this is a lot to deal with right now i'm really really angry and what i don't want to do is i don't want to go into a spiral of neck i only came on here to let people know what was going on with the estate agent situation in in Britain over here, because people over here need to know how it's what's going on. So, yeah. So, basically, estate agent and you know the estate agent over here called spoiling for a fight or called to have something to use against me because things were too calm and lies were told. Or gaslights were happening. It's basically the, the sum of it. And I was very angry. And I'm still very angry. And when. You know. And when I'm, ang when I'm angry. I take control. And they know this already. I don't know why they. I don't know. I don't know. How they keep missing it. But the hatred in my heart. Is the only reason. Why I've been able to do. Everything that I've been able to do. It's because of hatred. It's not because. It's not because I like people. I now said in my videos that, oh, I like people really, but no, like when you've been tortured for decades and your family's turned against you and your friends have turned against you, hatred is the only thing you have left. And ironically, me not liking people that much is exactly what helps me function. Hatred. But anyway, I gotta go. I did. I wasn't making much sense here, but I'm just very angry about the situation. Um, if you can depict anything out of that, anything out of the shit that I just said, then go ahead and do it. But I'm pissed off. In a nutshell, I'm collecting evidence on all you motherfuckers because you're not about to have me entrapped out of another situation and think that you're gonna leave unscathed. You're not gonna. You're not about to roll around in my blood and think you ain't gonna get stained. Fuck out of here.